there we can simply do the same for the F2 all the way to Fn, and then you sum them. And when you sum them, you can use the summation sign that allows us to illustrate it as, as illustrated in equation 4.8. I guess that is clear. It's, it's, it's not really clear. It's purely what we have done uh, with regard to individual charge, and then we treat them as many. Now we introduce the concept of electric field intensity. So the concept of electric field intensity is described as the force that a unit positive charge experiences when placed in an electric field. And remember, we defined the idea or very many weeks ago when we are doing our first lecture, we defined the concept of electric field. And we say that electric field uh, is a region in space that a point charge Q, point charge Q experiences due to another charge in that field. So like assume that there is a source of the field Q1 here that is causing some repulsion. This is positive and this is positive. So assume there is electric field that is described by E electric field that Q or small Q is experiencing, we say that, that the intensity, which is defined by E now, is the force that the Q will experience. But we normally say that it's the force that would be caused by, observe this, which would be K constant, Q1 times Q, uh of course but now you're saying that if the unit charge ha of course we consider a unit charge then the charge small q would be divided there because we when for us to get the unit charge we have to divide by the charge cosine so we normally cancel this therefore we are saying that uh, the electric field intensity is the force ex due or due to a field experienced by the charge, uh, small charge, Q. So in few words, that is what you are saying as defined in equation 14. So if, of course, if the, if the, yeah, I think that is clear without the study repeating myself. Now for Q is bigger than zero, the electric field intensity is obviously in the direction of the force and is measured in newtons per group or when we say positive when we say positive charge here we are just saying that that charge is positive and of course charge can be negative because it is our as a, as a negative it's a negative charge so if it is positive then uh it's is the force is going to be, okay, assume here, this is the force Q is causing electric field in that direction, and Q is positive, therefore direction of uh, the fields are outward. Then a small Q here, and then it is going to experience a force that is going to repair it, because this one is uh, positive as well. That is why we are saying that the direction, the direction of the force F is, of course, the, the force on Q is towards the direction of the force F, which is defined by the, the electric field. And we are saying the units of measurement are you know, newtons per kuru. As you can see, it's force divided by charge. The units of the force is newtons. The units of the charge is Q, so it becomes newtons per kuru. And uh, there is an alternative way or unit that we use to define the electric field intensity. And we, uh, we define it as 
votes per meter. For now, you may not see the significance or the, how that comes about, but at a later stage, you will see how it comes about. So, um, I think equation four, ele uh, four eleven now expresses the electric field in vector form, and uh, because we were able to get the the force in vector form, it simply had another constant there, which was Q, Q1 and Q2. Now we are considering that the force is on Q1, therefore we divide by Q1, we are left with Q. So we are saying that the only term that changes for the electric field comparing to the force is the removal of the Q1 that is experiencing the force. And equation 411B just states that by removing these uh, position vectors and introducing the, the unit vector. So that again, there is nothing much or, of a difference from what we already know. Um, so again, we can apply the concept of uh, the principle of superposition in uh, to the electric field intensity. And we simply say that the electric field intensity that is experienced by a unit charge is equal to the sum total of the small electric field intensities due to charges Q1, Q2, up to Qn, positioned at, uh, at, at position vectors R1, R2, up to Rn, as you can see in this equation. And of course, it can be expressed as a summation, uh, as defined in equation 412, without necessarily doing their overmatch. An example is rather straightforward. I will not necessarily look at this example now, but uh, in the, during a tutorial session, we will we may consider this. Uh, but again, it is very simple. But for the sake of time and the plan that I have for this lecture, we will jump this bit for the say uh, and leave the examples to the day when. We are doing tutorials uh, and examples. So at that point, again, I will ask members or you people, if you have a question or concern or comment, uh, leave this now before we move on. For the sake of the person who is asking, uh, I will just repeat what I've already said about 411A, that, we know that it is now the expression of the electric field strength in terms of uh, the vector form, and because we already defined equation, uh, the, the expression for F in the vector form, and the only difference was that it had Q1 and Q2 as uh, adjusted uh, equation 411. But if you are saying it is a force per unit charge, then you know by divide by the force, by the charge that is experiencing the force. And therefore, we are saying that you cancel that and you cancel that. Sorry, of course, we are, we are not cancelling, cancelling at the bottom. Of course, yes. So you, it is like I was introducing that down there. So you cancel and you end up with Q that uh, is expressed in point eleven. So again, I think that is clear. If you have any more problem, we can discuss uh, at a later date. But uh, yeah. So that was the, the question, and I have less forward to it. When I have less forward to your question, always remember to say that you have, you have got what I have said. If you have not got, just note it down. I will find some time to uh, respond to you. We jump to equation 4.3 that uh, uh, so that we can move on. Now, uh, electric fields due to continuous distributions, of course, of, of due to continuous charge distributions. This is where we are talk, going to be talking about a line. So in, notice that in the past, we have been saying a point charge. We have been saying a point charge Q. So we are not going to be considering a point charge anymore, but we are going to be considering a line, a surface, or a volume that is described uh, 
by uh, by their formulas respectively. So we are saying that so far we have only considered forces and electric fields due to point charges, which are essentially charges occupying very small physical space. It is still possible to have continuous charge distribution along a line on a surface or in a volume, as you can see in figure 4.5. And so what are we saying before we look at these diagrams? So again, I have given some comparison here. This is the, uh, the point charge that we have been discussing so far, but then consider a line that, had, that is having a charge, uh, a, a uniform charge distribution, consider a surface or consider a volume as you can see in this diagram. So these are the situations that we are going to find ourselves in and we explore four changes. So uh, it is customary to denote the line charge density, service charge density and the volume charge density by law L. So notice that we are introducing law L, which is not the, the normal law that we have been using in critical coordinate system. So we are saying that the raw L here illustrates the charge density. And we are saying that it might be volume charge density, service charge density, or line charge density. So that is the confusion that we must avoid. And each of them has different units. So as for, for instance, the line charge density has centimeters per, okay, groups per meter, uh, uh, per meter as the unit for the charge density. And the service charge density has units, groups per meter squared. And lastly, the volume charge density as units groups per meter cubic. Of course, that goes without saying that it is charge per volume, charge per, per surface or per charge per line. So uh, we move on. And we are seeing now that the charge or the element, charge element DQ and total charge Q due to these charge distributions are obtained from 24.5 and I believe you might have seen them at this one. And this is again quite straightforward that uh, if you have an elemental charge having uh, the charge density raw and it has, okay, well, I think I should start with the, with the length. So I will just change this to express an elemental length, dL, and it has charge density raw L. All we are saying is that the charge inside that elemental length is simply going to be given by vision 413, which is raw charge density times the length. That is, uh, that goes without saying. Just like, you know, we, we used to say, uh, volume is equals to density. How do you use to express density in those days? D density times, uh, Oh, we never used to say that. We used to say this in, in, I think, in primary school, that mass is equal to density times volume. So if you consider this volume as your elemental length, dl, and mass to be equivalent to q, then density is equivalent to our charge density. So I've just used that example for uh, ease of understanding equation 4, 1, 3. So 
if you now having said that this is the elemental n it is described by that if you want to find q you integrate on this side and you integrate on this side once you integrate on on the left you get q you get q when you integrate on the right you get a uh, line integral law l dl so without saying equation 413 uh, becomes straightforward okay so and similarly for the service charge density i i just thought it is important that you get this very clear that we are using raw l we're using raw l for line charge density raw s for service charge density and raw v for volume charge density so that is what we have uh, just uh, got just a minute and i can see wash wairimo is saying that or oh, Ashuka Miano is saying that she has a problem with the comment section, but she is following the lecture. <laughs> Whatever that means. I want anyway, uh, everybody to show how, how you can show her how to write it on comments because comments are obvious. You have written yourself. So also show her how to write. Anyway, uh, just describe how you can find that. Anyway, that, that that's the concern from Lizzie Waidimo who is saying that someone was should come here, no, is having a problem. That is addressed. Anybody else with a concern or, co or question? Ha, ah, Eric Murua is saying that uh, how I repeat that part of changing R to R, R minus R1 minus R2. Okay, that is noted. And Dennis Murioki is asking about what well, about those who miss the cut? About the cut, I, I you know, when you have advertised the cut all these days then you miss the card we will find a way of solving that problem no setting the card is not a, a joke so i can't set another card immediately but i will find a way of compensating you for a card i will set a makeup card you let me respond to that i will set a makeup card for anybody who never performed very well so that uh, they can uh, they can somehow improve their score so those who miss the card and those who got one, two, three, four, five, you will have a chance to uh, to do to how to do a makeup cut so that uh, all of us are the same page. So don't I don't want to hear anybody else asking me about the cut because I think I have uh, explained that. Anybody else? And if you are writing the registration number, you write a registration properly. So even this Washuka Miano, who is uh, told that, that registration number is not complete, write it as it's supposed to be. Don't have to, you know, I normally extract this information and put it in the report that I have to make every time to my university or to my employer. So let's hold that. Anything else? So apart uh, before we repeat what uh, Murwa is telling us to repeat. Looks like no other questions. So I will take make a very small illustration before we can move on. 
let me create some space here for that question. Okay, so I think I have enough space now. Someone is telling me to Ah, this is not being recorded. Okay, I think uh, someone has properly noted I uh, was not recording that, so that I, I believe they want to be sure to, to to see the concept I'm illustrating. Therefore, I'm recording this. So we are saying that uh, initially R is described by this is R, but now if R is now a vector. We are saying that if this is R1 and this is R2, you can express R from Q1 to Q2 as R12. So the direction becomes that. So R12 is expressed as R2 minus R1, which are now vectors. And we are saying that we can still express R12 as R1, okay, R, whichever, R bar, and then AR. I want to remove those things I have put down there so that they don't confuse anybody. Why is this? Yeah. So we can express that as such. And therefore, the only term I think we introduce here is AR. So that it moves from being a vector to being a, from being a unit, from being a scalar to being a vector. So remember that AR is equals to from this equation equals to R12 divided by R. And therefore, my force, which is now a vector, becomes uh, Q1, Q2, A, okay, I'm, not, I'm now removing AR so that I can have R12. So I'm moving, I uh, have R1 to all over R squared that was there. Remember R squared was there and four pi epsilon naught. And then this section includes the R bar. And therefore we are saying that F becomes equals to q1 q2 all over four pi epsilon naught this arm is the same as that so uh, uh, r becomes three of them now so it becomes r power three in the direction of r one two and I guess, I guess that is clear. Let me confirm from my notes. Uh, if I've not made, not made any mistakes, I think that is how it comes about. So let me confirm. Uh, from this, uh, from what I've just shown you is that we moved from having F12 with AR, if this AR that we have manipulated, so that it can give us R12 over R, and when you remove the, when you remove that, you end up with with this. Okay, I think we, we have already done this. So what the person wants, I guess, I, that I might may not have done, is uh, just where we are now saying that. R12 is equals to R2 minus R1. So if you if you keep that one there at the, at, at, in the bottom, you, you are saying that okay, at the numerator, 
you are simply saying that this Q1, Q2, R1, 2 is equal to this. So you have R2 minus R1. All of them are vectors. Then divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R3 cubic. So now remember that R, we say that R is equal to this. So we, we, we simply have R2 minus R1. Of course, this is magnitude cubic. And now Eric is asking, how did that part of R magnitude come about? Which part? Okay, I think I will go back to that to that uh, page I had. I hope I will be able to convince how it comes about. R magnitude, how does it come about? We are saying that R, R12, a vector, is equals to R mag AR. And therefore, you can always say that this is the, the, the R12 inside being that you are looking for the uh, for the magnitude and r12 is equals to uh, r2 minus r1 therefore anytime you have r magnitude you can always put it uh, as such where you have r12 which is the numerator this is equals to r2 minus r1 bar okay of course this among uh, without without modulus because it is purely a vector but the one that has modulus you have R2 minus R1 modulus. So we are just replacing this one. So where you have R, R that is not, R that is not uh, a vector is expressed as such. So when you have a three cubic, uh, R cubic, you just put a three there. And where you don't have the, where you have the vector, you put this term. So I hope Eric is now clear. If he did not clear, I think we will make up with you uh, on our own time. But I guess for everyone, I believe it's generally clear. And of course, we can still review the recording. Okay. Yeah, I think now Eric is okay. I'm glad. I, I'm glad Eric is okay now. So we want now to jump. I think we are jumping now to space. Uh, to specific charge distributions. And I will take a glass of water. So let's discuss these specific charge distributions. We will start with the 